All right, KMR Rotary. You know what we're about. We're about the brap. We got the brap. We're going to talk some brap. Here we have a beautiful example of a freshly rebuilt three rotor, the Mazda 20B. This is a this is based off the OEM block. So you can see we're still running the factory cast iron thick plate, Cosmo or FD3S or three rotor style thin plates. And then uh, your rotor housings, whether they say 20B or 13B, they're basically the, uh, the same displacement equation and interchangeable. And you might have uh, seen some of where I talk about the interchangeable parts on three rotors and 13Bs in recent videos, but that's not what this video is about. We're going to cover some of the parts, talk a little bit about this build and why we built it the way we did. So the OEM uh, cast 20Bs came in a few different codes. Um, no code, A, B, C, D, um, and so on. And basically, as you got later in the codes, the castings got thicker around some of the weaker points in these blocks. Um, so a lot of people seek out the later codes because they are inherently stronger. One of the things we do at KMR, Mazda Tricks, whether it's on my race 20 bs um, or when a customer needs it is we'll fully stud these blocks and that is uh, half inch hardened steel studs um, either going from the back to the front plate or in some places all the way through um, and what that does is it really strengthens up the block. Even though this was one of the weaker castings and a lot of these parts are now the 13B components as we've upgraded stuff because these blocks haven't been available in a long time. And uh, right now in the U.S. you can't really get the 20B housing, so 13B housing is perfectly fine replacement. Um, but because this was a early block and it is aiming for high horsepower, it's actually even achieved high horsepower in the past, uh, we decided that obviously studying absolutely mandatory. Along with that, it's been swapped to E and J two millimeter two piece apex seals. That way, you're ensuring that your rotors, your turbo, your rotor housings are a lot safer. If anything uh, were to go wrong when you're running high boost, nitrous, anything like that, a lot more protection with some of those aftermarket racing style seals. This is a full street port. Um, we wanted to be able to flow a lot of air, but we also wanted some mid-range power and drivability, so it's a very large KMR street port. And this particular motor is capable of anywhere from about 600 to 1,000 horsepower, depending on your boost setup. It is a wet sump, so you st see we still have the oil pan, traditional front cover, perfectly acceptable. Um, we've made some modifications, racing rear oil regulator, shimmed the front oil regulator for higher pressure. Um, race rotor bearings, everything's been polished, multi-window bearings on the stationary gears, also polished, WPC treated shaft. Um, the rotors have been side cut and lightened. Um, I think the, the side cutting is the most important aspect, especially when you're looking at reliability, um, high RPM, high boost. Even though the 20B does have a center main bearing here, um, you still have one portion that's unsupported, and the whole eccentric shaft does have a tendency to flex, and the rotors have a tendency in their tricoidal path to get a little bit of oscillation. So under high boost, under high horsepower, or high RPM, um, I'll always recommend side cutting and then Mazda tricks balancing. Uh, we also lightened the rotors on this one. It was just kind of a little added bonus. We had time, um, so that just freeze up a little bit of that rotating mass, similar to putting a lightweight flywheel on it. Um, overall, um, you know, even though there's a lot going on here, um, the studding, the oil pressure modifications, race bearings, um, the porting itself, it's still what I would consider a fairly straightforward block. Obviously, uh, quite a few performance mods and uh, reliability mods but when you really get down to it you know we're not peripheral porting there's no semi-peripheral porting no bridge porting and, and these blocks are still capable of very high horsepower numbers reliability and drivability it's one of the reasons i really liked the cast iron based three rotors 
Um, very diverse. And when you start to look at their upper end potential in absolute race trim, when you're talking about semi-peripheral ports, full bridge ports, large turbos, drag trim, um, there are people pushing 1,800 horsepower, 2,200 horsepower, and I'm sure even more at this point, especially when you get into the billet blocks. Um, but again, talking about what Mazda did years ago, this is still just a great example of Mazda's engineering passion for the rotary, an example of how good these motors were, um, and at this point, they're almost uh, classics. They're rare. They're collectible. So you have to protect your investment um, to replace the shaft, to replace the thick housing, to replace some of these parts is really expensive. So proper maintenance, proper build, and proper tuning. And you can have a happy, brappy time. I think that's a wrap. I just wanted to uh, give the walk around a little talk. Anybody has questions, let me know. Nice little wrinkle finish on the black. Looks good. Gunmetal on the rotor housings. I'm out of here. This one's, this one's shipping out. It's packing up right now. Thanks for watching. KMR.